Day one of working as a chef on a yacht. Well, I'm not really on the yacht yet. I first had to go to our friend's wedding ceremony. They did a Christian and Hindu ceremony, and it was really cool to see all of the different traditions. After the ceremonies, we got to dancing. Well, that was short-lived. The next morning, I had to take an early flight down to Miami. And then from Miami to Nassau. The flight in is gorgeous. Those waters are so blue. Got into the airport, cleared customs, and got a taxi to the marina. Once I got on the boat, I went right to work. I got in around 4.30, which means we have half an hour before cocktail hour. So for an appetizer, I'm making prosciutto wrapped cantaloupe. And also on the platter, I'll put some nuts, more fruit, and some cheeses. So cocktail hour is usually about two hours before dinner time. The guests will go to the bow of the boat and I'll either make a specialty cocktail or just pop open a bottle of wine. And I'll serve the drinks and the appetizer on the bow. They'll hang out there for a couple of hours while we get prepared for dinner. I'll be in the galley cooking and Gina will be upstairs setting the table. And once dinner's ready around 7 p.m., we'll call them to the table. If you have any yacht or cooking questions, feel free to put them into the comments. And if you're enjoying this channel, please support me by subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing. I'm so happy that I can share my day with you and show you the real behind the scenes of what it's like to be a chef on a yacht. It's like below deck, but I'm sorry to tell you, I don't have as much drama as them. So if you just like good, wholesome fun and you like food, this channel's for you. Let me be honest with you. I've never had prosciutto wrapped cantaloupe, but I know it's a super fancy appetizer, so we were gonna try it out. I tasted it before I gave it to the guests and I wasn't a huge fan, but the guests loved it, which is all that matters. If you guys like my recipes, stay tuned because I'm coming out with a cookbook. I do have recipes and cooking classes available. I do a live cooking class once a month and it's only $2.99. So if you're interested in that, just check the description below. Right at five o'clock, I served up the appetizer with a bottle of white wine. And now on to dinner prep. The owners love to rank my dinners. So after dinner every night, I ask them what their new ranking is. Last year, the number one spot was Thai red curry. So of course for night one, I have to make that. Tonight I'm using chicken, but typically I use beef. This Thai red curry recipe is actually on the membership page and it also has a video tutorial for it. If you wanna be a little chef member, check the description. Here's a little chef tip. Whenever I need to cut proteins really thin, I will have it semi-frozen. So just stick it in the freezer for about an hour before you cut into it. This year, the owners are on a special diet, low FODMAP and low glycemic. The low FODMAP is difficult to follow, so I have an app for that. But in general, no onions, no garlic, no dairy, and no gluten. And for low glycemic, pretty much low sugar, low carbs. So anything that I sweeten has to be sweetened with an artificial sweetener. This curry recipe has sugar in it, so I have to substitute that with artificial sweetener because Asian food's all about the balance of sweet, salty, and savory. So yes, diets do hinder some of the creative freedoms that I have, but that's okay. This is why I'm being paid the big bucks. Even though I'm limited on ingredients, I'm still trying to make the best tasting food possible. So into my curry, I'm gonna put some bell peppers, zucchini, bamboo shoots, and finish it off with some Thai basil. It's day one for me because I had to fly in, but it's day four for the crew. So that means this produce is four days old. So you see me cutting into that zucchini? I'm cutting off a spot that doesn't look too great. That's another big part of this job. Managing inventory is probably 80% of it. I have two refrigerators and eight freezers and I'm in charge of it all. So you have to constantly be rotating product and checking expiration dates. So that happens every single day. Most of the rotations come from the freezer because all of our meats and breads are frozen. So I'm usually three days ahead of schedule. So all of my proteins for the next three days will be in the refrigerator thawing. 
and inventory is constantly moving. Sometimes we have two guests and four crew, and other times we have 20 people and four crew. So we're plowing through food. Okay, back to the curry. I sauteed my chicken with some curry paste, and in goes the coconut milk. Set the table on the upper deck, and dinner's served. On to dessert. Remember how I said the owners can't have sugar? That can be a real struggle when making desserts. So tonight I'm testing out a recipe. Threw in some PB2 powder, Greek yogurt, and swerve, which is artificial sweetener. I shaped them into cookies and threw them into the freezer. Then I melted some Lily's chocolate, which is just chocolate sweetened with stevia, and I coated the bottoms of the cookies with the chocolate. I'll say these turned out okay. The cookie was a little too soft compared to the shell of chocolate on the bottom. It was a little difficult to eat, but I'm proud of myself. I'm making a sugar-free dessert, and I don't like making desserts in the first place. Yeah, so if you're new here, I'm not a baker. I cook, I don't bake, I don't like measuring. That's me in a nutshell. However, I am excited to try out these new sugar-free dessert recipes that I looked up. Stay tuned to see how they turn out. After dessert is served, I'll get started on the dishes, and usually the crew will help me out with that. Once the galley is cleaned, I'll take a shower and get ready for bed, usually around 9.30. We typically have early mornings, so we like to get to bed early. And the best part of working on a yacht are all the beautiful sunsets. Bye, little chef.